welcome to the fifth of our uh, Lenten luncheons. There's one more to go next week. Uh, next uh, Friday, we will have uh, the Reverend Dan Deneen, pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Gloucester, speaking about uh, iconography and how icons are uh, made and what they mean and should be uh, very interesting, and the menu is baked ham, potato casserole, broccoli, salad, and the usual pies for dessert. So we hope that everyone uh, will be back with us uh, next week. I think today is probably the biggest attendance of this year, or close to it, and glad everybody uh, could make it. We don't have any snow or rain or anything to uh, be concerned about, so I will... Uh, Ask Pastor Jeff to come up and say grace before I introduce our speaker. Good afternoon. Glad you're here. How are the meatballs? Okay, thumbs up. Oh, we got some applause. So um, anyway, um, thank you for being here. As Jim said, um, this is the fifth of six. Next week is sort of our religious offering one um, with an iconographer, one who makes them, which is a very cool thing, and the icons themselves. But meanwhile, we're so happy that the fire chief is here. Um, so let's say some quick grace. The Lord be with you. Gracious God, thank you for today. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the reprieve from the snow and ice. And we thank you for the work of the Brockton Fire Department and its leadership as they keep the city safe and secure. We thank you especially today for the wonderful meal that we had, the hands that made it, and the hearts that prepared it. All this we ask through your name is holy. Amen. Amen. Today we do have as our speaker Fire Chief Michael Williams of the Brockton Fire Department. Uh, over the 37 years that we've been uh, doing this. I think we've had uh, every chief that's uh, been in uh, office during those years, so uh, we continue that tradition with uh, Chief Williams, and uh, just briefly, uh, in 2015, the chief was appointed uh, as the chief of the department, and uh, he joined the department in 1986 at the age of 20, becoming the youngest firefighter ever appointed in the city at that time, and was assigned to Squad A. And uh, he continues today, and uh, we're glad to have him. He is a fifth generation uh, firefighter. Uh, he, uh, his family goes back to service in the mid 1800s on the Hancock Fire Company. Uh, I don't think anybody in here remembers them, uh, but uh, anyway, please uh, join me in welcoming Chief Williams. Good afternoon. Thank you, Jim. Also, thank you, Pastor Jeff, for having me. Much appreciated. I do want to begin by saying I'm a little disappointed that uh, retired Chief Galligan was unable to join us here today. Um, I guess he had some, a dental appointment that he had to, he had to make this afternoon. Um, a little part of me, though, is, is happy because if I make any mistakes on the history of the Brockton Fire Department, Chief Galligan would certainly call me on that. As Jim mentioned, um, I'm the fifth, fifth generation of my family to serve the Brockton Fire Department. My great-grandfathers both worked for the Hancock fire company up in Brockton Heights, up, on the, up near Pearl and, and Pleasant Streets. Um, they were both members in the 1800s. Um, my great-grandfather, Edwin Snow, was a member, along with my great-grandfather, Edward Williams. Um, Edward Snow and his wife had a daughter named Eileen, and Edward Williams and his wife had a son named Lloyd. Lloyd was my grandfather. Um, also served with the Hancock Fire Company. Now, Eileen and Lloyd were married and had two sons. Uh, Robert, the oldest, became a priest, and the younger son, Francis, is my dad. 
who also served as a fire alarm operator here in the city of Brockton. Um, there's an old saying that when you first start on the Brockton Fire Department, I shouldn't say a saying, but a tradition. Your first day on the job, you start in drill school at our central station down on Pleasant Street, and the current fire chief pays you a visit. Now, I remember my first day 31 years ago, like it was yesterday. And Chief Hallisey at the time came in and looked at the class and gave us his, his welcome and said, uh, don't be surprised, one day one of you sitting here may become the chief. And I certainly thought he was crazy. <laughs> but as you can see, things turned out a little differently. I guess the old saying, never say never, holds true. Um, as I said, my, my, my father, Francis, better known as Frank, um, brought me up and educated me in the Brockton Fire Department. So from a, from a very young age, I would go to fires with my dad. He was, at the time, you know, their, their nickname is called Sparks, and they, they chase fires, or always go to fires. And Like I said, as, as a very young boy, I would go to fires with my dad in Brockton. And my dad became very friendly with a lot of the Brockton firefighters, so in turn, I got treated a little special when we would visit the station. I would get to climb on the trucks, and I was just in awe of Brockton firefighters. I, I still am. <laughs> but as a young boy, I mean, these, these guys were my heroes. You know, not only was, was it, the, you know, the Red Sox and the Bruins, but firefighters in my book were, were my heroes. It was very, very uh, intriguing to me. At, in those days, I, I would have loved, like every little boy, to be a firefighter someday. But in Brockton, I had known, talking to my dad and talking to other people, it was a difficult, it was a difficult job to, to get. And, and to be privileged enough to get on the Brockton Fire Department was a difficult thing to do. When I was 19, I took my first exam, and, and by the grace of God, I did very well, and I was hired about a year later in 1986. Um, I was assigned to Squad A, as Jim mentioned, downtown. Um, unfortunately, in 1991, the city was, fell on some financial hard times, and we had to have some layoffs of police and firefighters. The Brockton Fire Department laid off 31 firefighters in June of 1991. In working under the civil service system, when you get laid off from one city or town, you get put on their, their rehire list. So any other city and town in the state that's civil service has to hire off of this list first before they can hire new people. So I was fortunate enough to be hired by the Waltham Fire Department, the city of Waltham, which I was very grateful for. I worked in Waltham for two years, in 1993, I did return to Brockton, which I'm, I'm very happy about. <laughs> in 1996, I decided to study for a promotional exam. I should say it was back in 95. Um, I, as I mentioned, I was in our firefighters when I first came on, and another aspect of that was being very in awe of, of firefighters who reached rank. And our rank structure is, is lieutenant, captain, deputy chief, and chief. And I, if you thought I thought firefighters were, were, were something special, if you, if you were smart enough and talented enough to make lieutenant, I really thought you were something. And, and right up the line, if you made captain, in my book, you were just top notch. So it, there was a lot of information to study. And I was probably an average student going through school, um, did okay, you know, I never set any records for straight A's or anything, but I did okay. So when I, it came time to start studying, I really had to find a way to apply myself. Um, and basically what it, for me what it was, was putting in the time. Um, to study for these promotional exams takes many, many, many hours, weeks, weeks on end, studying anywhere between eight and ten hours a day. So it was a commitment that I, that I decided I wanted to make. I, in my mind, fulfilled that commitment. Um, like I said, in 1996, I was promoted to the rank of lieutenant. I was what we call a rover or a floater. You fill in for any other officer that's out around the city. So I did that for three years. I finally was assigned to Engine Company 2 right across the street here as a lieutenant. I continued my studies uh, to become a captain in the year 2000. 
I was fortunate enough to stay on Engine Company 2 here across the street, which I enjoyed. Eventually, I moved downtown and worked on Squad A again as, as a captain, which I was very proud of. As the captain downtown, you perform in the role of acting deputy chief when the current deputy chief is off for whatever reason, whether it be a vacation or a single day that he has off. The captain that is assigned at Station 1 downtown fills in for the deputy, so you act as the, the deputy chief for that shift. So that was my position at the time. I started to gain more and more confidence in my abilities, and one thing I learned was that it, as overwhelming as this job can be in the beginning, once you realize that most of what we do is common sense and making good decisions, you find yourself in a position where you feel confident enough to maybe take that next step. And being downtown, that's what I did. I began to study for deputy chief. Fortunately enough, in the year 2006, I was promoted to deputy chief. Um, and again, at that time, I thought that was it. That was as high as I was gonna go. But as things played out, some people have different plans on when they wanna retire or what, what their aspects and goals are at the time. Everything is about timing. And I was talked into studying for the chief's exam. Again, I, I thought myself being a little bit crazy. But, but that worked out. I'm very happy I did. I'm very proud to serve this department. Um, I think we have a great fire department. Um, the the men, work very, men and women both work very hard um, and are dedicated to their jobs. So I, I'm thankful for that. Um, just quickly, I did a little uh, background history check. I'm actually the 10th fire chief in the city of Brockton. Um, and the first appointed fire chief was in 1892. So that's 128 years of service with only 10 fire chiefs. So that's quite a long time. A, a lot of these older chiefs, they, they were chiefs for a long time. These days, I don't know if, if a chief could stand being in office this long. Chief Galligan kind of set a record. He was, he was the chief for 17 years. And to me, that's a lot. But if you look back at Chief Marston, the very first chief of department, he was the chief for 24 years. Chief Dickinson, I believe, was chief for 19 years. In between there was, unfortunately, the second chief of the department, Chief Daly, who Jim has talked about, unfortunately perished in the Moose, Moosehead Lake disaster. Uh, chief Lynch, looks like 16 years. Um, and it goes on and on. Some of these... Chiefs were chief for quite a while. I don't know if I could take it, take it for quite that long, but I'm gonna do my best. I will. Just one other issue I wanted to speak on today, other than I'm, I'm probably spoken about myself long enough, um, is one of the issues that the fire service is facing these days. And what it is is cancer awareness in, in firefighters. Uh, I don't know if any of you uh, witnessed a special news program that was on this past Tuesday night on, on Fox 25 News, but it focused on the dangers and risks of firefighters being more susceptible to being diagnosed with cancer than the average person. Um, Commissioner Joseph Finn, the commissioner of the Boston Fire Department, has really spearheaded this um, program to educate not only the public and, and legislation, let's say, but also firefighters themselves. Um, years ago when I came on, we, our, our gear was, was a lot different than it is today. Um, today gear is, is manufactured out of a, a material called Nomex, gives the firefighters a lot better protection. Um, they now wear a hood under their helmet, which we never wore years ago. Um, these days, firefighters are encouraged to keep their air masks on a lot longer than we did in the past. Um, we're faced today with, with chemicals and uh, products that are made from synthetics and plastics. And these synthetics burn at a much higher rate and give off a much more toxic smoke than even 30 years ago when I started. So it's something that we're trying to educate firefighters on. Um, protect yourselves and protect your families. Like I said, if any of you saw that story on Channel 25 the other night, they did a, a, a special story on a 41-year-old firefighter married with three beautiful children 
and he's been battling cancer now for about four years. Um, it was just kind of heartbreaking. Um, a very good friend of mine was the Watertown fire chief who passed away from pancreatic cancer this past year. So it does hit close to home. There are actually Brockton firefighters who have been diagnosed with cancer. Um, so it's not just Boston, this, this, this epidemic is everywhere. And it's something that we're trying to educate everyone on um, and the, the firefighters to take more care in their protection. So with that said, um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you having me here today. Um, I would like to reiterate uh, the comment of, of Pastor and Jim saying that we're glad there's no snow today. Uh, I don't know if I speak for everyone, but I've had about enough of the snow. So it was nice to be here on a dry day. And again, um, thank you to the kitchen for, for a wonderful lunch, and thank you all for having me. Thank you. Yes. It's really true. Yeah, like you said, like you said, you know, 30, 40 years ago, most materials, whether it be the curtains, the drapes, clothing, carpets, furniture, everything was made from, from cotton or wool, natural fibers, a lot less dangerous when they burn. Today, everything's polyester or, or fire retardant, and those chemicals, when they burn, they produce toxic gases that, that if we breathe them in, it, it, it's just a, a nightmare. So in the public is the same way. Don't, you know, we hear stories all the time of people going back into a burning house for, God forbid, a pet or, or, or belongings that, that you want to try and save. And believe me, I'm an animal lover, but try, try and wait and let the fire department go in and get them. It's not worth your safety. Yes. It can be difficult. It can be difficult. A lot of times, even if, if, if power is killed at the pole, let's say, there's still energy in, in those solar panels. So we have to be very careful. We're advising all of our firefighters, try not to even get close to them. If we need, normally, in a, in a house fire, you try and put a hole in the roof to vent the heat and gases. But with solar panels, we have to be very careful. Now, a lot of times, we have to do it just via windows or doors and use fans to circulate the air uh, horizontally as opposed to vertically. So yeah, solar panels are, are tricky. Yes? Yes, uh, is it dangerous to pour water on solar panels? I wouldn't do it on purpose. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're supposed to be safe because of rain and weather. Right. But are you talking about maybe cleaning them? No, no, when, during a fire. Oh yeah, it's, it, normally it's fine. 
but we just we don't want to get too close physically. Yeah, they're 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 exposed to the weather, so in most cases they're going to be okay when they get wet. Yes. In Brockton, I, I don't, couldn't give you an exact number. I'd have to say it's, it's three quarters to one quarter, somewhere in that neighborhood. Last year, we responded to over 26,000 runs in Brockton. And I couldn't give you an exact percentage, but my guess would be three quarters medical to one quarter fire. We're, Brockton, Brockton's a busy city. Thank you. Because it's such a it's tough job to do, and to do it over and over again, and it must seem like hopeless right. at times. Yeah. Um, I think it was a comment that Mayor Carpenter just made recently that police and fire do not discriminate. It doesn't matter your situation in life, your age, your religion, your color, your creed. We don't ask those questions. We just respond. Do you have more questions, sir? Do, yep. Mm-hmm. We have a program that ed educates not only the elderly in, in, in different complexes throughout the city, but we have a, a school education program where it focuses mainly on kindergarten and third grade, um, hoping that those are the two points in a child's education where we're going to make the most impact. And it, whether it's you know at home fire safety, it's in, in when the when children get into the third grade, hopefully it's things that they can bring home. In a lot of cases, we, we, we're dealing with um, foreign-speaking residents here in Brockton, and a lot of the parents aren't getting the accessibility to education in, in a foreign language, let's say. So a lot of times, we rely on the, on the young children to bring this information home to the parents. Um, that's something that's discussed in, at the, in the school level. Anybody else? Well, let me, let me just finish by saying that, that our department is always here for you. If you need anything, you can certainly call our business number. That's 508-588-0585. Any questions, whether it be for the fire department or, or fire prevention or any safety issues you may have, don't ever be afraid to call and reach out. You. You're welcome. Thank you again. Again, we thank the chief for uh, being here. We thank the fire department for all they do. Uh, we're great to uh, their great neighbors across the street. Uh, they paid us a visit a couple Sundays ago uh, when we had a power surge and set the alarm off. Uh, and uh, we know from that experience, we need to do a little education again with the congregation uh, because Everybody went for the exit the furthest possible way from the church. <laughs> all the way out that end instead of all the doors in between. So uh, we're going to be working with Captain Williams from fire prevention to uh, meet with some of the council members and those of us on risk management to go over uh, proper procedures so we can direct everybody which way to uh, go. But uh, we're happy they're across the street. and. Uh, I was telling the chief earlier, it used to be that uh, the alarm in the main church, every time we had uh, a thunderstorm, the alarm would go off, and I'd get called to come up here, and the guy said to me one night, oh, when it starts thunder and lightning, we sit in front of the station and take bets when the first Lutheran fire alarm's going to go off. <laughs> so uh, we haven't had that problem in a long time, knock on wood, so, uh, but... Uh, 
I will put in a plug uh, while I'm up here too on the fire department. Uh, the Brockton Historical Society, we have a great fire museum up at 216 North Pearl Street. Stop up, we're actually open this Sunday from two to four. Uh, stop up, see the history of the fire department. Uh, there's some apparatus up there from the 1850s. Uh, some pictures of uh, the chief's great-grandfathers are probably up on the wall there somewhere. Uh, but stop on up. Uh, we're open the first and third uh, Sundays of the month from 2 to 4. And uh, we hope to see all of you next week here, same time, same channel. And uh, speaking of channels, also thank you to Brockton Cable Access TV for again being here uh, this week. And everybody have a good week, and we'll see you next Friday.